We are on Twitch. We are live. So if you want, you can come join us. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, this right here is the channel where if you miss it live, all the highlights will be there. Um, we also got the Patreon and we got a Discord. If you want the links to that, go to the description below. It's something called a link tree in there. Just click it and it will take you to all my other social medias. This is uh, not what I wanted, but this is Russell Howard. Uh, hilarious stand-up comedy. A small clip of the comedian Russell Howard, Wonderbox, uh, where he talks about attending a funeral that is related to it. Okay, well, it's all in good comedy. YouTube. Um. Okay, what what is this? Why is it so? This the quality that it got. That's it. Okay, that's it. All right, whatever. Thank you very much indeed. You cannot know how cool it is to do a uh, a DVD here because I started my comedy career about a hundred yards that way in a pub called the Bunch of Grapes. Yeah, and now I'm here, so thank you very much indeed for coming, it's amazing. The, um, it's truly lovely. I've been very lucky this year, I've seen loads of cool things. I met Steven Gerrard, I met Luis Suarez, I met Coutinho. <laughs> but the coolest person I met, and I met, who? Met him last year, I met a 14 year old boy. <laughs> His parents sent me an email saying that their son was battling with cancer. Would I come to see him? I said, yeah, of course. So I went to see him, and he was really funny, properly funny. He had an iPad of my favorite jokes on his iPad, and he was going like that. It's very good, very good, very good. Shit. <laughs> good, good, shit. It was like Tinder. And <laughs> his favorite joke of mine was a sketch called Mr. Dildo. Now, I'd forgotten that seminal piece of art. Um, but basically, it was a sketch that involved me dressed in a six-foot cock costume chasing after old ladies. It isn't high art, but it's very funny. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it scripted or is it not scripted? It's probably scripted, right? It's gotta be scripted. It's just, I'm asking that because what about Mizzy? Because if his was scripted, okay. But if it wasn't scripted, then Mizzy, that's, that's more menacing than what Mizzy did. It was also at a different time in history. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. If you've ever seen a 14-year-old boy battling with cancer laugh. But I'm, I'm talking about Mizzy, not the house thing. That, that is, that's crazy. But the running away with the old lady dog. That one. Now, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a 14 year old boy battling with cancer laugh, but I'll tell you this now, there isn't a lovelier sight in the world. He was just sat there going, brilliant, look at that. Your dress is a cock, you're chasing an old lady, what's not to fucking love? <laughs> he had an amazing sense of humor, his entire family did. I guess if you're dealt a card that vicious, you sort of adapt and you become funny. And they certainly were. He was doing a bucket list. I went to see him a few times. He wanted to meet Simon Pegg. He wanted to drive a fast car. By all accounts, that was quite the experience. <clears throat> Slow down, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and he wanted to meet me. And the fifth time that I went to see him, he said to me, will you come to my funeral? Now that is something that you can- Damn, that's heavy. That's very heavy. Never prepare yourself for. You don't know. Well, I'm quite a gobby twat. I think I've proved that. But in that moment, I, was, I didn't know what to say. I was like, mm, yeah, oh, mm, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll go, mm, yeah. Mm. And he looked at me with a really steely gaze and just went, don't be a dick. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. So what do you mean? And he looked at me and went, it's going to be fancy dress. <laughs> But it gets even better. He's designing the costumes that people have to wear at his funeral. <laughs> and this young man has gone dark. He's making his dad go to his funeral dressed as the Grim Reaper. <laughs> How amazing is that? It that is pretty amazing. What, okay, so did the parents act? Is this true? Did the parents follow through? You gotta give him what he wants. Gets even better if anyone coughs, his dad has to lift up his scythe and point at them. 
uh, I couldn't believe how brave he was. He was fighting fear with funny. I was in awe of him. And I looked at him and said, wow, what do you want me to wear? And he went, I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee they're probably not gonna let me post this on YouTube. It's probably gonna get blocked. Not sure I do. <laughs> oh, I think you do, Mr. Dildo. <laughs> he wants me to wear a throbbing six foot cock costume to a 14 year old boy's funeral. In case you're struggling to visualize that, <laughs> this is the outfit he's deemed appropriate for hey. me to wear. And I will. I've already planned the route. I've I, that was out of I like. I should have seen that coming, but I did not see it coming. Let me rephrase that. Let pause. I should have seen him walking out on stage in the outfit, but I did not see him walking out on stage in that current outfit. Plan the route that avoids every single school on the way. I am not <laughs> getting pulled over wearing that fucking thing. Hello, officer, where am I going? I'm going to a funeral. Of a child. Yes, I am a comedian. Good day to you, sir. Don't touch my helmet. And I looked this young man in the eyes, and I, as best I could. And I said, I will do this, but you need to write me a letter saying that this was your idea because 95% of me believes you. But there is 5%. As I look deep into your eyes, that are currently swimming with joy, they think, what if that is the ultimate prank? What if I arrive? Oh, uh, yeah. And everybody's in all black and you're in a dildo fit. At the funeral, everyone's dressed in black. The door creaks open. But you know the best thing about him? With every great story, there came a twist, and this was it. I saw him just after Christmas. He'd been given three days to live. He planned his own funeral, and then he got tested, and he no longer had cancer. His blood counts had gone up. He was no longer dying. How fucking amazing is that? I was like, yes! I said, please. Let me tell this story at the end of my DVD. He was like, really? I went, fucking right, it's amazing. Can I tell it? He was like, yeah, right. I went, in fact, at the end of the recording of the DVD, you're going to come on stage. Shut up. Yes, you are. Wow. Fucking right. What Where do you want me to wear? Oh, I think you know. <laughs> I swear I thought this was a fabricated story, but this is actually the most w thing I've probably seen on, in the last two years. No, not two years. Maybe a year and a half. This was funny and it's touching at the same time. Darren, is there anything you would like to say to the good people of Bristol on the final moment of this DVD? Marr. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Bristol Hippodrome, thank you very much for coming. Good night. It's a pretty dope moment, man. He'll live in, he'll forever remember this. Forever remember. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little touched. Pause. Tell her leave a like, comment, I'm gone. <laughs>